what up what up Wimboys here and today i want to show you guys how i made this map painting using adobe firefly ai in photoshop so without further ado let's jump right into it so if you're not already familiar with adobe firefly it's an ai generating program it has several different functions that you could use but for this i'm going to use the text to image generator which you see right here on the website so if i come down here to the bottom i'm just going to copy and paste this description that i was using before that was giving me the kind of style that i wanted so if i come down here in the lower right hand corner and hit generate this is going to generate an image for us in which if you look at the aspect ratio it's in square which is fine but i like using 16 by 9 kind of like working a widescreen and it's going to generate this cave that i kind of like the style that i was able to implement in here in which if you look at these right here these look really cool and i noticed that when i use these keywords down here it always gives me this style and which is cool because because i want to take these later in the photoshop and start cutting and pasting them and bringing them together so for me right now i have down here it's only clicked on art but i'm going to come over here to content type and i'm going to make it a photo and then if i come down here to color and tone i was using the vibrant one which is right here lighting i like using the mood lighting so we're going to do dramatic lighting right here and then composition i like using the wide angle so i'm going to click on that and as you start clicking on these you can see that they're adding them down here underneath their description and then for styles like science fiction it's not going to change it out too much but i'm going to add it here anyway and then down here in the lower right hand corner i'm just going to click on generate and see what it populates with so right off the bat it's going to give you four different images in which i kind of like the style of all of these right here i did download some ones earlier in order to make my map painting but let's say that you have this style that you really like but you want to start populating it with other images like maybe a minecart and so leaving the description that i have down here in the beginning i'm just going to type in maybe like minecart and then leave the rest the same and i'm going to click on generate and this should give us a minecart in the same exact style that we're already used to whenever we had our previous images in which here we go we have some really cool ones in here i actually like this one up here this one's pretty dope as well but let's say i want to actually use this one right here all you'd have to do is click on it and then in the top right you see this little download button you can click on this but now let's bring some of these images in the photoshop and i'm going to show you guys how i merged everything together now right now i have adobe bridge opened up and i'm going to show you some of the files that i actually downloaded from adobe firefly in which i'm going to bring in a photoshop so if you look right here this is the minecart that i actually pulled out myself which i like this one and then it has some other elements like i pull out this foreground element right here and actually make this opaque right there if i scroll down here a little bit more you can see that i have a cave entrance one which i think is pretty cool right there i like the pillars of this one right here so i saved these ones out and then this is another cave entrance in which i liked how this pillar was right here on the right hand side in case i want to use this for anything but if i jump into photoshop you can see everything that i have here merged together so if i pull up my layers right here and just start I only have four images in here but i have a background image because i wanted this horizon line i have these pillars in here in which i have these just cut out like so and then i have some foreground elements right here and then i have the minecart in here at the beginning as well as my top layer now i'm going to show you guys a trick here in photoshop that we could use to isolate these objects so that we can start photo bashing these together so let's say i'm back here in bridge again i'm just going to actually make this a little bit smaller so i could drag and drop here in the photoshop so let's say if i start off with this minecart like so I'm just going to drag and drop this into photoshop and then back here in bridge i'm going to show you guys how we can isolate this here as well so i'm going to drag and drop this here and let's start with this one right here so if i come over here and actually select this right here and the first thing i'm going to do is actually get rid of this watermark the reason i'm getting rid of this watermark is because i want to use this for photo bashing my map painting here but please don't go ahead and use this just for ethic reasons and say like for a client project you don't want to use this in there because is ai generated so you technically didn't make it even though we're going to be photo bashing these together but moving on i'm just going to come down here actually select this and then with the right click right here i'm going to come right here to where it says content aware fill but before i do that i'm actually going to unlock it first now i'm going to come back down here right click content aware fill and it's going to isolate this area right here in which if i click apply now it took it out so i'm going to click ok and i'm going to hit Control d on my keyboard and now you can see that it's taken out here if you actually wanted to make this a little bit more blended in here if i come over here on my left hand side let's say we have this clone stamp tool i'm going to left click on this and then i'm going to hold down the alt key on my keyboard and that's going to bring up this little target 
if I left click somewhere in my area that I want to pull from, so like say right here, oh, and before I do that, it actually made another layer for there. So if I turn this off, you can see that this just made a separate layer in which I could just come back over here and I can merge these down. So I'm going to flatten this image and lock it again. And now moving on with my clone stamp tool, come over here in this area, hold down the alt key, left click, and let's try to merge this in here a little bit better like so, so that we don't see that line down there. And if you want to make this a little bit softer, you see this little circle up here, you can control the hardness here as well, but I'm just going to leave it at zero just to really have it feathered out somewhere along there. Okay, so now let's get to isolating this out. So if I come over here to my marquee tool, I'm going to select this and you notice up here in the top, you'll see where it says select the mask. I want to select this right here. Now this is going to bring us to an area where we see everything is opaque, but if I just left click and start dragging, it's going to start noticing the areas just kind of picking it by contrast in which I want to have saved as my layer. So I'm just going to click and drag these around like so. And so everything that is solid, this is the stuff that's actually going to be masked and everything that's still opaque, this is going to be masked out and which is really cool because it's actually going to give us a mask here that we can further manipulate if we need to. And let's say if I left click in here and I drag this in and I didn't want this, if I hold down the alt key and then left click, I can easily get rid of that right there. So I want to make sure that we have a hole right here as well. And then we're just going to click on OK. We do have some attributes that we could go over here and further manipulate, but I'm just going to click on OK because it should give us a pretty good mask here. In which you can see now we have our transparency here inside of our hole. We have a hole right here, but it did miss this run right here. So if you look at your layers, you can actually just click on this. And if I hit B on my keyboard, that's going to bring up my paintbrush. And then if I left click, I can easily just start painting this away here on my mask. And again, if I come up here and change the hardness a little bit, you can always manipulate that as well. And then if you come down here in the lower left hand corner, when it's black, that's going to make it go away. But if I hit the X key, it's going to flip it to white. And let's say I click and drag in here. Now it's starting to reveal it. So I'm going to hit Control Z. But remember, if you have it as black, it's going to start painting stuff away. And if you have it at white, it's going to start revealing it back in. So I'm going to hit Control Z twice again. And that's going to do it for that layer right there. Now let's say we want to do the same thing with the minecart here. I'm just going to come back over here, select my marquee, select the mask. I'm just going to select this right here by left clicking and dragging it around. And it's doing a pretty good job only picking up the cart and the pieces that I want. Then we're going to click on OK. You can see that we have our mask here, but we also have this area down here, which if I hit B and then hit X to make sure this is black right here, we could easily start painting it away. And this is where like a pen, like a whacking pen or something of this sort really comes in handy. But you can also come through and manipulate this once you start having it on top of your layers. So let's actually bring this onto my matte painting. I'm actually going to make this one invisible. I'm going to come back here, hit the V on my keyboard, hold down shift, left click. And I'm just going to drag it into my scene here. And then I'm just going to pick a good place to have it, maybe somewhere around here. Then if I click back on my mask, click B, you can start to really start blend this in. So I'm just going to come down here, maybe come over here to hardness, start really blending this in like so, and really just go to town with it. So that's the basics of how you can start matte painting with AI inside of Photoshop. There's some really cool tools in there that you can actually use to isolate the objects that you need very easily. No longer do you have to pick the pen tool and kind of trace around everything. With the power of AI, we're easily able to isolate stuff out. Now, I have another tutorial that I'm actually working on in which I'll give you a sneak peek in which I'm bringing these layers in the Unreal Engine so that I can bring a little bit more life to it. Now, this is Unreal Engine 5.2 that I have opened up right now. And if you look inside of my viewport, you can actually see that I'm using displacement to kind of manipulate each one of those layers. So let me zoom in here a little bit so we can see what's going on. So we have that layer right there. I'm using displacement to make it pop out a little bit. I'm using some mega scans in here to kind of fill in some of the void here as well. And then you can see right here, I have the mine cart underneath the rocks. And if I look in the background as well, I actually have an AI generated HDR in which I'm using from Blockade Labs, which I have a tutorial on that as well. If you guys are interested on how to use that. But if I come over and look through my actual camera, so let me come to perspective, cinematic camera, this is what everything looks like once we're in camera. So I'm actually going to hit G to get rid of all the icons and everything. 
and this is what I'm working on. It's not fully flushed out yet, but I'm going to add some atmospheric fog in here, add a couple more elements, and maybe even go back in the Adobe Firefly and add some more elements in here so that I can easily zoom in here. So if I pull back here a little bit, it's starting to show where it breaks. So maybe I'll get some AI to fill in some of this stuff up top and at the bottom there. But my ultimate goal is to make this like a two and a half D type imagery here that we could easily pull through and we get like a really cool effect from it. So this is how I'm using Adobe Firefly to kind of come through and make a moving image, which I'm excited to get this one flushed out so I can make a tutorial later and show you guys all the steps that you need to bring everything in, add displacement and make everything really pop. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, especially if you wanna see my Unreal Engine Adobe Firefly tutorial that I'm currently working on. And leave me a comment down below. I know a lot of people have opinions about AI and how it should be used. So let me know how you guys are using Using it and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care